you watch my cutter wheel is on that black line just inside on the inside of that black line okay you don't have to drive fast you don't have to drive slow however you do have to drive and this ladies and gentlemen is one car you don't need a license to drive your glass cutter car Hi everybody, it's Ed here for the Artie RV channel and we are in this Conway Glass stained glass studios. We're gonna give you the top 10 things to avoid when first starting out and doing stained glass. You know, many of us were drawn to stained glass by the beautiful colors, the intricate designs, the patterns, the paintings, things like that. And those are all things that I, I personally find fascinating about art glass or stained glass windows. And having traveled and looked at a lot of different windows and a lot of different techniques applied to those windows, I am for sure one of its biggest fans. What? These are the top 10 mistakes to avoid when learning stained glass, okay? The number one thing that you need to do and avoid when you're starting out stained glass is thinking you already know how to cut glass perfect. Practice, practice, practice. And when you practice cutting window glass, like I show in the videos here on the RDRV channel, when you're cutting window glass, you know that after watching the videos, that's a soft glass, it's very easy to work with, and it will build your confidence in cutting glass. So remember, practice, practice, practice. Rule number one, things to avoid when you're first starting in stained glass is not practicing enough. Number two is not cutting your glass to fit your pattern correctly. So I'm gonna cut a straight line now. Barb's gonna get a close up on this. We're just gonna listen. Just remember, we have to listen to our glass cutter. Oh my, that was good. Now, our favorite plier for this particular cut is our running pliers. Remember, running pliers have a concave and convex jaw, and that is the only reason glass will break. So let's get back to number two and cutting your glass to fit the pattern. It is imperative, y'all. Please, first learn how to cut glass, Second, learn how to cut your glass to fit the pattern. Because when you, when you listen to our show and you say, Ed, how come my glass don't fit the pattern and nothing's fitting tight and I'm using a $32 pound of solder every time I solder something? Why? Because you're not taking the time to cut the glass. So here we go. I'm going to trace a pattern onto clear window glass using my Sharpie. And remember, we don't want to use a fat boy for this. What we want to use is the felt tip, medium fine, just like that. And I have this question asked to me all the time. Ed, is it inside the black line that we cut or is it outside the black line? I'm gonna show you because what we've done, we've traced the outside of our pattern. This is the outside. The line we're gonna cut to is we're gonna stay right on on that black line there. So here we go. Barb's got a good close up of this. The first thing we want to do is I'm going to take my square and I always say this when you're cutting glass, you don't need to work with this right away. So you know what? Let's get rid of it. Take our running pliers, set that off to the side. Now remember, we've traced this out. This is glass piece number 33, okay? This is my glass cutter. I have a couple different glass cutters and we're talking about glass cutters in a little bit. Right now, I'm showing you how to make your glass fit the pattern correctly so that even after you grind it, the pieces are gonna fit together. So remember, take your time. You watch, my cutter wheel is on that black line, just inside on the inside of that black line, okay? You don't have to drive fast. You don't have to drive slow. However, you do have to drive. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one car you don't need a license to drive. Your glass cutter car. So here we go. I know I'm cutting more than one line at a time, but it's okay. 
because I'm showing you how to do this. You see that? It is, I mean, I am right on that black line and I think Barb's getting it. Okay, so we came off. Now we have one, two, three, four, five scores to make pattern number 33. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here. Ed always takes his fingers underneath the score and I'm gonna pull down and away, okay? Down and away, just like down and away. Turn the glass, come up here to the top. That's gonna free up space here and here for you. So remember, down and away. Now, I want you to, Barbie, get a close look on that because you can see all of that black line is showing and that's what you want, but you wanna stay on the inside of the black line. So here we go. My index finger knuckle, grousing pliers, down and away, okay? You see that? That black line is still there. And again, here we go, y'all. Down and away, the inside of the black line. What you all to do is practice cutting glass because once you get that down, there you go, it will fit your pattern correctly and the frustration stops. So take the time on inexpensive window glass, y'all, to learn how to cut glass, learn how to cut your pattern. Glass. So we're at number three right now, and number three is using too much cutter oil. Okay, you just bought your tools, you got your new cutter, and they send you some cutter oil, and it comes in a little bottle like this right here, and you go, oh my! And I got this big reservoir in my new pistol grip cutter, and I'm thinking, wow, I need to fill that up. And Ladies and gentlemen, please don't. When you get your new cutter, it comes with a little eyedropper just like this right here. That's all, you see this right here? A little eyedropper, and it is little. It's a very little eyedropper. So when you undo the back end of your glass cutter, whether you're using a pistol grip or like mine right here, the pencil grip, I don't use cutter oil in my pencil grip anymore because it's 20 years old. It doesn't need it and the wick in it is still available and it's still doing well. So what you want to, what you do want to do though, is get a little bit of cutter oil in your brand new cutter. Okay, now, and I'm gonna explain about your cutter to you. Some of you probably won't ever take your cutter apart, but I'm gonna just explain something to you about your cutter, okay? Inside your cutter head, the part that's attached to the cutter base itself, all right, is a wick. So right, and and uh, attached to that wick is a spring that feeds and unlocks like a reservoir thing for your glass cutter. So your glass cutter, okay, watch this. I'm gonna push up, see that? Every time I push up, a little bit of oil goes into that wick right there. So once that wick is wet, and you see how much oil I have in there, like an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths at the bottom at the most, that's really all you need for your cutter. And now I pumped that twice and there's oil already on my score. So once you do that score and you use up that little bit of oil that's in the reservoir, you're good. You might want to put some oil in it, maybe in another month, if you're going to store it. But you don't need a whole lot of oil in your glass cutter. Please don't overfill it. Fill it full of oil. You're making a mess. Your hands get all oily. Your glass gets all oily. Then you can't find your score. And it's another thing that frustrates you. These are the things that you need to avoid. And now we're going to number four. And that is Ed. What solder do I use? Right now you ought to be using the cheapest you can find. <laughs> I'm just kidding y'all. So here's, here's the deal. I like to use 50-50 when I'm doing lead. I like to use 60-40 when I'm doing copper foil because I like to patina things and the 60-40 having more tin than lead if cleaned properly, and we'll talk about that, if cleaned properly, will produce almost a black patina 
on the solder if you use a 6040 on copper foil. So remember that. The number one thing to avoid when doing stained glass, learning stained glass, is don't use rosin core solder or solder that already has flux in it. Y'all, that's a nightmare. It doesn't work. It's not designed for what we do. It's designed for electronics. So leave that solder to the electronic guys and let's keep with our 50-50, which is 50-10, 50 sot, 50 lead, or 60-40, which is 60-10 and 40 lead. Easier to clean up, easy to keep up with. One is actually more uh, flexible than the other. That's why I like to use it with lead. So just kind of keep that in mind. And we're off to number five. Okay, everybody, now we're on tip number five of the top 10 things to avoid when first learning stained glass, okay? Number five is once you start soldering and everything, you want to make sure that you don't start soldering until, and you know that you can actually finish that window, that you know you can actually finish that window before you go to bed or before you cook dinner you don't want to let it sit overnight. If you let it sit overnight, uh, you're going to get a lot of oxidation like this. And also what's going to happen is that, believe it or not, that black patina will actually etch the glass. It's going to leave a brown ring down the edge of the glass and you're going to have trouble getting that off. So what you want to do is make sure, okay, make sure everybody that once you start soldering, that you can go ahead and complete that project, even go on as far as waxing it. So, we're talking about cleaning your stained glass window. You're gonna solder it, you're gonna clean it, and then you're gonna patina it. But cleaning it, okay, this is the one thing you have to remember about cleaning your copper foil windows, is I want you to take a little bit of baking soda and water and mix it up and use that solution to clean your window, your stained glass window, because, and then you're gonna patina that, okay? And then you can just clean it with regular glass cleaner and make sure you clean it really well, and then you're gonna to wanna to wax it, you know, to finish it, okay? So once you, if you do the, the copper foil and you don't clean it correctly, you can take some steel wool and you can clean the glass you can clean the foil, the solder, and I mean, it's oxidized, y'all. It is really oxidized. So we did this on purpose so that you could see it. This is way oxidized. Look at that. Look how that comes up. That's how oxidized that solder was. It's not even been patinaed yet because I just didn't clean it when we were done soldering it because I want you to see what a mess you can make and how much extra work you're gonna make for yourself. So remember, if you've got time to solder your work, make sure you have time to go ahead and finish it and don't let it set overnight, okay? We're talking about soldering and, and honestly, the number six thing out of 10 mistakes to avoid while learning stained glass is you're using way too much flux. Flux is just an acid that cleans the copper so that the solder will stick to it. You need to take, you can take, and actually let me, I'll show you. I will show you my flux brush right here. I'll let, I'll put it right there. Maybe we can see it. So this is my flux brush. I've taken a real bushy, hairy brush and cut it off. Cause you don't need that big bushy, you're not painting. You don't need that big bushy brush. So this is my, this is my flux. I put it in the flux. You see that? That's way too much. Drip it off. Now look how much is left on here. I'll put it on the paper for you. That's it. Can you see that right there? Right there. That's all. Just like that. Just a little, a little bit of flux, y'all, goes a long way. Great. I'm going to tell you about a great flux to use, and it's what I use and what a lot of our RDRV fans use is the Ruby Flux. So it's on our page. You go to Conway Glass forward slash RDRV, scroll down, you'll see the tools and stuff there. Those are tools that Ed and Barb, we recommend those tools because we use them here in our studio. If this is the first time you've been to the channel, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. 
Number seven of the top ten things to avoid. Top ten, not just things, y'all. They're mistakes. Top ten mistakes to avoid when learning stained glass. And we're going to go back to this again. Clean your stained glass window before you stop for the night. Don't let the flux sit on it. Don't let the patina sit on it. Let me tell you something. Once the patina turns to lead or solder black, that's it. It don't get any darker. You can't add, keep adding coats and everything else. If you clean it correctly with baking soda and water first and then patina it, when you put the patina on it, you'll see exactly how dark it's going to be and it will stay that way. So hey, we've got the top 10 mistakes to avoid when learning stained glass. Coming up everybody, it's number 8 and I'm Ed and we're here in the stained glass studio at Conway Glass for the RDRV channel. So you know what, today is the top 10 Mistakes to avoid when learning how to do stained glass. The number eight thing to avoid, because you just spent a lot of money on your soldering iron, is not purchasing a wattage control or what's called a soldering iron control or a rheostat. You know what? If you're going to take the time to learn how to do stained glass, you really need to learn how to do it right. And there's a lot of you out there that don't use a rheostat, and that's fine. I'm telling you right now, your work will change if you use a rheostat because you're doing two things wrong. Number one, you're working way too hot. You're working way too hot for the materials that you're using. You want to know why your black patina, why your, your copper foil peels up while you're trying to solder? Because you're working way too hot. And I'm not harping on this, but I will tell you this. I've been doing this for a long time. And combined with my... 100 watt soldering iron, this rheostat or soldering iron control at about number, usually running about number eight, unless I'm under the fan like I am now, will keep everything in line and allows me to work as fast or as slow as I prefer. And it won't put junk on my iron, burn my tip up and all those things. So please, the number eight thing to avoid mistake wise for when you're learning stained glass is by not buying a rheostat. Buy a rheostat for the extra $34, whatever it is, and if you can't find one, give us a call here at Conway Glass, send us a message online, and we'll send you one. We've got them for sale. Anyway, give us a call. Please, don't avoid using a rheostat when you first start doing stained glass or from that point forward. Number nine here on the 10 most mistakes made by beginner stained glass students. And number nine, y'all, in your studio, you should have safety glasses all the time, band-aids. You should always wear eye protective. You should never wear open-toed shoes. Remember, safety first in the glass studio because we are working with glass. And the number 10 thing to avoid when doing stained glass windows and learning how to do stained glass, Please avoid getting frustrated because you didn't spend enough time on number one and number two, which are learning how to cut the glass correctly and cutting the glass to your pattern. Y'all, this is Ed for RDRV Glass Studio Channel. I'm here with Barb. We're at the Conway Glass Studios today, and we're giving you everything. Give us a thumbs up if you like this. We also want to hear you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell. We're live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps.